Today we will see how we can turn a daylight 360 into a night view. We will see how we can add spots, how we can add lights and how we can add a star sky. We will only use functions in Photoshop that we can also use in Affinity Photo 2. That will be in the part 2 where we can see how we can do the same in Affinity Photo 2. I've prepared the images and also the lens flares. You can download them. I've prepared the images for this video. You can see the lens flares, the day image and also the star map. You can find the link in the description from the video. So you can follow my workflow and do exactly the same. First we load the day image and then we double this layer. There's one important point for day images and night images. Into the night you cannot see all the colors like in daylight. Our eyes are not capable to capt the same intensity of the, the colors. So what we will do is first to limit the saturation of this image. I go back with the saturation. about minus 38%. Then we add a new layer and we let it uh, without any color actually. We will first load now the sky map to see what color we have into the sky map before we give this uh, background color here. So we will add our star map. There is one important point that you get absolutely in the center this image. We will see it later why. And we will add a mask. On this mask we will add a gradient first we will use a big gradient to take the color from the sky Now we will choose a color in the sky, so we go back to the image layer. Not too dark. And we, fill, we will fill in this, this layer. And then we will multiply this layer. So now we have the same color uh, downside. It's a little bit too dark, so we will change it. I go back to find my best sky color. Something like that and I will fill it here. You can uh, play with that. Other possibility is that you reduce here with transparency. You can also play with this uh, value to adapt your night view. But I will work with 100%. Uh, now we have to adapt the gradient from the sky. I will it I will do it uh, smaller
Now we will add lights into the windows. For this I add a new layer. I choose a yellow color first. Something very light. I put that directly on about 50% and we add a mask. We fill this mask black. I will add directly another layer. I will add a white light. We do the same about 50% and we add a mask and we fill that mask black. Now I will add a warm light. For this reason I choose something a little bit more orange. Something like that. <clears throat> we do the same. 50% we add a mask and we fill it black. Now we have to go into details for the windows. I choose this image with this uh, chalet. So we have a lot of windows we can fill. For this we have to be at last at 100%. But I recommend you to be even at 150%. Now we will select the windows. You can change to daylight. It's easier to uh, select the windows. We go directly on multiple selections and we choose the windows. Choose only the windows you like to fill with one of the three colors we created. Remember that we have a warm light, white light and a yellow light. So I will first work on the yellow light. You can also leave some windows without any light. Not all the windows have to be with light. And now let's see what happens if we go to the mask. We change to white and we will fill. If we go back to, back to night, you can see we get some lights. That's not really finished. We will give them more transparency later, but that's the method to choose the lights for the windows. So we will continue. I will select other windows. So we have first to unselect these windows. I will go to the warm light. And I will add some other windows. We fill them with the warm light. have to go to the mask and we fill with the warm light. Now it comes one of my tricky invention. We will add on this night view a layer.
we will go to two pixel border and we will select windows like that and now we will undo the night view on this windows you see you can even see my Christmas tree here into the window so that's a very uh, handsome trick to really add a right impression onto the windows they are enlightened from the inside so we can go back to daylight for these regions we will uh, also use the daylight for other uh, lights like the spots so we will continue with all the windows to do the same. And you can see the difference. We did already one house, so we will continue on other chalets. Go back to 150%, it's easier to select the windows. We go back to the other chalets, we will choose the yellow light. We unselect the night view. We go to the mask and we add some lights on these windows. Here we can see a spot, we will do the spots later. So it's a kind of light paint painting we do. On the day view you can better select these small windows. We have a, also a hospital here. I will add some lights. Then we will fill these windows with the yellow color. And then we do the same on the mask from the night view. So we get daylight on these windows. For this video I reduced the images you can download at 10,000 pixels per line. If you have a bigger uh, image it's also easier to select the windows from the small chalets but for download size i decided to go down to 10,000 pixels per line and not to work on two uh, huge images with the mavic 3 i get 24,000 pixels per line i did this uh, image with the mavic 3. now we will continue with the spots but before we do that, we have uh, already uh, layers here. I will a little bit name this layer so that we can easily find later what we have done on each layer. Uh, 
I will also regroup these three layers here into one group. I will name the lights. And now we will add spots. For this we go directly into uh, the folder where we have the spots and we will start with a lens flare who is light blue. I drag it directly onto the image. Then we change the size. I have two spots here on the chalet. We will go a little bit closer. One is here and the other one is here. So that's on the correct place. Now what I will do, it's a little bit too sharp, so I will add a filter. I will use a Gaussian filter. You can play until you have the right smoothness of this spot, something like that. It depends on the resolution of your image. And now it's quite okay for that. Now on the spots we have the same uh, possibility with transparency. So we add a little bit transparency, maybe uh, about 85%. Then I will directly copy this spot and add it here. And now what we can see, we have the spot, but what happens with the view? On the view uh, we have not more light, so we have to go back onto the night view here and we add some daylight around the spots. For this we use a, a brush. Something like this size and go slowly at the beginning. You can see I can now add daylight, paint really daylight here. And that gives uh, at the end the really realistic uh, view. So we do not work with other uh, light layers. We only add daylight on these zones. We can do uh, the same, but with uh, a little bit uh, less intensity on the, around the, the windows. The windows will also give us some light around the window. And that we can add on the other windows and also the other spots. I added some spots here. On the spot you can give uh, much more daylight and around the windows less. Something like that. Here I also place the spot. And so we can add daylight. I added the street spot here. And I added a spot on the barn. There's really a spot here. And we, if we have now a look on our image, 
it's quite realistic what we have done. And the advantage, I repeat, uh, for this method to turn a daylight image into a night view, we get the full uh, 100 ISO resolution of this uh, image. We have no noise on it and we can a little bit work on Photoshop or Affinity Photo 2 to do our own uh, light paintings on this image. Now we have uh, one important uh, step to do. If we go here on the sky mask, we have now to check that we have no stars into the horizon. Here we can see uh, a star, but it's quite realistic. Now I have not to do a, a correction, but you could uh, here do some uh, corrections if you like to hide the, the stars. So <clears throat> what you can do, we can also use the, the black brush, for example, here. And we can eliminate uh, stars if we see some of them. But I guess that's quite correct like this <clears throat> and uh, also play with different uh, window colors we uh, created uh, three different types a warm light a white light and a yellow light and also for the spots if you have smart filters uh, to uh, smooth them we can always change the values and uh, most of that uh, functionality we find here in Photoshop, we have exactly the same in Affinity Photo 2. I guess uh, now it's time to save the image. But uh, before we do that, we have to check the borders. For this uh, reason, I will reduce the layers to one view and I will add some space on the image. That's really important for uh, 360 images. If you do a lot of Photoshop work or Affinity Photo 2 uh, work, you have to change the size of your image. I always work in percent. I will just show you the trick and then we have to do a precise selection of this part here and we move it here. Now I will uh, show you what could happen if we do a lot of uh, Photoshop uh, work. I will reduce it and we will see if we have exact borders. So that seems to be the case. So we have no uh, correction to do here on the overlap. So it was quite a good work. But you have to check that if you do not precise place, for example, the sky layer, you can here uh, add a line and you will only see it if you publish the 360 image. So I can go back and we can really now save the image. What I did here, I loaded now my Photoshop image to Affinity Photo 2. And as I used only uh, compatible functions, we get all the lights. But I will uh, reconstruct it in a second video uh, in Affinity Photo 2 native. 
what I have here uh, as an advantage if I reduce now my layers I can transform my final view into a live projection and I can also check the image like that You get not the, the same quality in Photoshop if you go into live projection. Photoshop uses an old method and Affinity Photo 2 has a complete new 3D kernel. So that's quite amazing what we can see here. And that's only a 10,000 uh, pixel per line image. Can go a little bit more in detail. So that's also a possibility in Affinity Photo 2 at the end to check the, the image. But I will show in the next video, um, I do it from native into uh, Affinity Photo 2 to do exactly the same image. So I hope you give it a try. You can use my images, my spots and compare the final results. You can also leave some comments. If you have questions, I will answer them. You can also check my next video where I will do the same into Affinity Photo 2. I hope you enjoyed this video. Until the next time, thanks for watching.